might still trickle in a little bit, but we should probably get get underway. Uh, we're delighted to have Luca come back for part two of average case complexity. Uh, Luca, over to you. Thank you. So let's see how much progress we uh, made since yesterday. So we talked about what is a distributional problem. Uh, we talked about various definitions of uh, efficiency for algorithms, and uh, perhaps we'll um, kind of continue to highlight some various options for exactly what we mean by an algorithm to be efficient. And then we talked about how to get reductions between problems that preserve average case tractability. And uh, we got an example of uh, a NP completeness with respect to this kind of uh, reduction that used data compression in a fundamental way. And uh, now the main topic, but then it will sort of uh, be an opportunity to talk about lots of other things also. But uh, the main topic that I want to uh, discuss today will be how to generalize this completeness result so that it can uh, uh, sort of work even for problems that have distributions that are uh, efficiently sampleable, but are not uh, efficiently computable in the sense that we discussed yesterday. Yeah. So here by sampleable, this will be sort of the most general kind of distributions that one might be interested in for uh, combinatorial algorithms. So that just distributions for which there is some uh, efficient algorithm that is able to sample the distribution, some efficient randomized algorithm whose outputs are uh, sort of, uh, samples from the distribution with the correct probability. Um, so here, efficient will be polynomial. There are actually, as kind of with everything concerning average case complexity, some uh, kind of tricky uh, fine points about the definition. Uh, particularly concerning exactly what we mean by this algorithm running in uh, polynomial time, which is that if we think of the sampler as taking a stream of bits as input, random bits, and then running in some fixed polynomial time, and then producing a sample, so then any possible output of the algorithm is produced with a probability that is a integer multiple of uh, a negative power of two. So um, if, for example, in our target distribution, something has to happen with probability one third, it kind of just cannot be done like this because one third cannot be expressed as a ratio of an integer to a, a power of two. So this kind of annoyance is, um, could be that just by saying, well, we'll uh, uh, don't worry about uh, differences in distributions that are uh, exponentially small in um, statistical distance. Uh, but, but actually for the crypto people that have thought about uh, uh, zero knowledge, particularly perfect zero knowledge, where it's important that you think about distributions that are sampleable in an exact way, uh, there are actually two non-equivalent uh, notions of a distribution being um, exactly sampleable. So one is to say, um, to say the distribution D is sampleable if there is some sample X that runs in uh, expected polynomial time. And then S of N uh, outputs samples that are exactly uh, as if they were sampled from the distribution D of N. So that's one option. Uh, the other is to say that there is some S that runs in worst case polynomial time. Uh, outputs either a sample of uh, dn or 
a special fail symbol. Outputs fail with probability, I don't know, it doesn't matter, less than how half. And uh, the distribution of uh, S of N conditioned on uh, being different from fail is precisely the distribution uh, D of N. So if you have definition two, you can get one just by sort of running the sampler again and again until it doesn't fail. And if you have definition one, it's not clear that you can get definition two. And in fact, there are some uh, distributions that we know how to sample in expected polynomial time, but um, we don't know how to sample in the second case. We cannot just put a timeout on uh, an expected polynomial time sampler. Uh, because it could just be that there are some possible outputs that are produced only with a small probability. All right, so, but um, for the arguments that we will take, pretty much any reasonable definition of sampleability, number one, number two, uh, exponentially small statistical distance uh, can be ignored. Any of these three options will work uh, equally well. Okay, so then um, I thought a bit more about a couple of uh, questions that were asked uh, uh, yesterday. So one was, um, let's say that we have something like plenty click. Uh, this distribution of inputs. So just kind of any kind of, um, distribution of inputs with a planted solution. It could also be stochastic block model, planted independent set, planted coloring. Uh, so is this distribution, is the cumulative probability function a uh, polynomial time computable? Which means then we can apply Levin's result and say that it reduces to the bonnet halting problem with respect to the uniform distribution. And I would say probably not. And because for, uh, for many of these planted problems, it's also believed that not only it's hard to find uh, the hidden solution, but it's also hard to distinguish the uh, instance sample from the distribution with a planted solution from uh, instances planted uh, sample without the planted solution. I say if we take a, a random graph with a planted click of size third root of n, or something much more than uh, root n then it's not believed that there is an efficient algorithm that will uh, distinguish it from just a pure g and a half random graph. You can get a tiny distinguishing probability just by counting triangles or things like, things like that. But if you want a probability tending to one of correctly identifying samples from uh, g and a half versus plenty click, that's not believed to be doable with an efficient algorithm. Uh, however, uh, this property of uh, the cumulative probability function being uh, polynomial time computable, it uh, also implies that uh, in polynomial time, you can compute the probability of each particular instance. So now suppose I give you, like we pretty half a G and a half third ocean random graph, we pretty half a graph with a plenty click. And I ask you to distinguish which one it is. So what you could do if, uh, the distribution with the planted solution was polynomial time computable was to compute the probability of that instance under the distribution. 
And in the G and a half case, almost surely the probability will be zero. So then your distinguisher can be compute the probability, see if it's zero. Because like any graph where the maximum click is less than what it would be in the planted distribution as probability zero in the planted distribution. So you get distinguishing probability that it's extremely close to one. Uh, and so let me say probably for uh, problems with a planted solution where you conjecture indistinguishability from not planting the solution, the distribution is not point one time computable. So it's not optimally compressible using arithmetic coding. And so uh, as of yet, uh, we still don't wouldn't know how to prove that say, if the bonding halting problem had an efficient algorithm under the uniform distribution, you could solve planted click or a, a stochastic block model or a, any of those problems below the known computational thresholds. On the other hand, all those distributions are sampleable because they literally describe through a sample. Say, what does a planted click distributions look like? Well, sample a random graph, pick a subset of vertices, make them a click, that's the graph. The description that I gave is a sampler. Uh, then, um, so that's one answer. Uh, then the other was, um, let's sort of there, so discuss several possible definitions of uh, average case efficiency. And an appealing one, because it's preserved by the reductions that we talked about, it's so it sort of can be used in, uh, instead of Levin's definition in the completeness result, uh, is to, define uh, kind of average case efficiency is saying that there is some uh, polynomial time algorithm that is correct, except with uh, negligible probability. Here, negligible means uh, there is some bound that goes to zero faster than any polynomial. So it's something like uh, one over n to a growing exponent. So one drawback of uh, this definition is that it's possible for an algorithm to have expected polynomial running time without satisfying this definition. And uh, um, I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, but uh, expected polynomial, like a running time that is polynomial in expectation is something that should be considered uh, efficient or uh, like at least it's what would be the first notion of, uh, I mean, it's literally the average running time, it's polynomial, so it should be considered uh, efficient. Okay, so now let's, uh, Let's see what we can do about uh, reducing a, a problem under the under a sampleable distribution to bounded halting. So essentially, the kind of result that I want to show today is to say that if uh, there is an efficient according to any of these definitions. Algorithm for uh, bonded halting with respect to the uniform distribution. Then for uh, every problem in NP and for every sampleable distribution, we also have an efficient algorithm. Uh, and the argument that we will give will work for uh, in Pagliazzo's definition, the one where uh, you uh, kind of get algorithms that can make mistakes, but those mistakes can be bounded by arbitrarily small polynomials. And also this time we will have to use randomized reductions. 
uh, to sort of define randomized reductions that preserve this kind of tractability, it's a bit messy. So actually we will not define them. We'll just uh, construct the reduction and then so study why it preserves tractability. Yeah. And uh, so the way in which we will prove this uh, has some similarity with uh, work done in cryptography on constructing pseudorandom generators from uh, one-way functions. And that's not a coincidence because this work happened around the same time, late 80s, and uh, was done by most of the same people, like in Pagliazzo, Levin, Luby, Goldreich. Uh, and so some of the important ideas that then later gave rise to the field of uh, randomness extraction and so randomness for space bounded computation, like uh, a lot of the great results in complexity theory of the 90s, uh, they came out from this effort of getting random generators from one-way functions and of reducing kind of sampleable distributions to uniform distributions. So, so Luca, just to be clear, at the end of this, we will be able to say that uh, finding a, that if you could solve bounded halting, uh, you could also solve planted clique. Like Absolutely, search, yes. Search version. Search version. Yes. Okay. In fact, for every, including the search version. Yes. Okay. Um, indeed. In fact, uh, talking about search problems will have to also be part of this and uh, will uh, come out in the discussion. Thanks. Um, okay, so just to uh, so see the main idea in a toy setting. Imagine that we have a, a setup where uh, for every n, uh, dn is a flat distribution. Flat meaning that um, uh, it's uh, uniform on uh, its support. And it supports its uh, proper subset, perhaps, of uh, all the possible strings of length n. So distributions like this uh, could be not computable in a uh, Levin sense, because it might be hard to tell which strings are in the support and which one are. Uh, for example, this could be Something happens if you are looking at the output of an injective pseudorandom generator. Yeah, so suppose that's uh, uh, what is happening, that we are, uh, that when we sample uh, an input from uh, this distribution, X has probability, uh, I don't know, uh, one in two to the K. for some known K. So that then in this case, a reduction that works is to uh, take X and uh, map it into H of X X, where uh, H is a, a random hash function. Chosen by the reduction. That maps N to K. I should, it's easier to prove with a slight different value, like with k minus three or something, but let's say uh, n to k. And uh, so this is not data compression, but it's a way to uh, map x to something from which x is recoverable uniquely, uh, but also map x to something that is essentially uniformly distributed. Yeah, so when I say I 
output h means output the description of the hash function. Um, if it's a pairwise independent hash function, just map maybe completely by some matrix, uh, output the matrix. And uh, h of x, it's uh, just uh, k bits. So in full, the way the reduction looks like is that a reduction from our problem to bonding halting is that X is mapped to a certain machine M, H, H of X, uh, T. So here H is randomly chosen by the reduction. Maps N bits into K bits. Uh, M is a non-deterministic machine. Uh, the given H and uh, a string Y uh, guesses uh, an X such that H of X is equal to Y. And such that X is a possible output of the sampler. And then proceeds to solve problem P on input X. So the point of this argument is that if uh, the distribution of X is in our distribution, in our the output of our sampler is uniform on some subset of size two to the k, then uh, if our element x is hashed to k bits, there is at least a constant probability that um, this hash uniquely defines x. The text is the unique pre-image of uh, h of x among the two to the k elements in the support of the distribution. So now a non-deterministic machine can uh, figure out this pre-image, verify that it's a possible output of the sampler by generating some uh, uh, random input for the sampler that uh, makes the sampler output X demonstrate in text is a possible output of the sampler. Uh, so then now uh, the machine knows what X is and can do whatever non-deterministic normal time computation solves uh, X. So then T is chosen to be large enough that this machine can do all those things. Uh, and so that's the reduction to bonding halting. And, and uh, Luca, so there's this failure probability associated with the fact that H is a random hash function. It might not like give you unique reco recoverability of X, but just to make sure I understand the point, like the reason to use, you need to use a random hash function because you need uh, the input to bounded halting to be the uniform distribution, right? Like otherwise you could choose a, a better a function H and avoid this failure probability, but then you wouldn't have a random input to bounded halting. I could choose H to be the identity, then it would be very easily in Yeah, for instance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So defined this way, the success probability is only constant. So if I hash to uh, kind of as many buckets as things that I want, the probability that the particular element uh, is the unique one that goes into a bucket will just be a constant. Uh, however, if I make this k plus log n, now the probability of success becomes uh, polynomial. Uh, when I look at uh, this distribution now, it's not exactly uniform because here, these are k plus log n bits, but there are only k bits of entropy in uh, h of x given h, just the entropy of x itself. Uh, so there's this deficiency of uh, log n bits, but that's still fine uh, because we can tolerate uh, up to order log n bits of deficiency in the output of uh, uh, our distribution because we just want it to be polynomially bounded by the uniform distribution.
Right, so that's uh, kind of shows that um, it is kind of possible to do some kind of uh, mapping of uh, an input of a sampleable distribution to a random input in a way that, or so to a random representation in a way that it's invertible, uh, but it's a very, also in a way that is different from uh, compressing the data. Although we can sort of think of H of X as being a compression of X, but you also have to present H. So it's actually a pretty big representation. Uh, but all of this works only in a very restricted setting. So we have to assume that the distribution is flat. And also we have to assume that we know the entropy of the distribution. And uh, so we know the size of the support of the distribution. So this is more of a toy example to get a sense of how to use Ashen than something that is useful in itself. In particular, uh, planted click will not quite uh, look like that. Although I think there isn't a huge I think even though the distribution is not flat, I, I think it's um, like most graphs have similar probability, even after you insert the click. It kind of depends on how many edges we're missing. Uh, that's uh, the main, uh, like because G and a half is actually a flat distribution. Uh, all the possible graphs have the exact same probability one over two to the power of n choose two. When you plan the click, you so it's a bit difficult to think about because there are multiple ways of getting the same graph. Uh, in a sense that you forget what edges were there among the vertices of the click before you planted it. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I would guess it's uh, it's pretty flat. But the techniques that we will uh, describe. They don't need to know the entropy and they work for um, every possible distribution. However, they work on uh, search problems. And so uh, we will have to argue that, uh, first we will need to argue that if bonding halting is solvable as a decision problem, it's also solvable as a search problem. And uh, and that is again one of those things that are uh, kind of not very interesting from the point of view of worst case complexity decision versus search, but become actually kind of interesting in the case of um, average case. Uh, like so, in general, how do you uh, show that? To solve a search problem, it's enough to have access to a, a decision one. Uh, for example, say decision versus search for uh, max click from the worst case perspective. Uh, so say I have an algorithm that given G and K uh, decides if there is a click of size, at least K or not. And now using such an algorithm, we would like to compute a largest click. And so what we can do is perhaps use binary search to find what is the largest K for which a click exists. So now we know what is the largest size of a, a click in G. So we figure out maybe the largest click size is uh, some number. Then we can pick an arbitrary vertex, delete it from uh, the graph, and then ask, well, in the graph without this vertex, is there still a click of at least 127? If yes, now we have reduced to the goal of finding a click of 127 in a graph that has one less vertex than before. If not, we know that that vertex must belong to the maximum click. And so now we have reduced the task of finding a click of 626 in the remaining graph. Uh, 
just among the neighbors of that vertex. So if the seal is a click of 127, we find the, the maximum click in the graph uh, without that vertex. If not, uh, we'll find the max click just uh, among the neighbors of uh, that vertex. Uh, and then we will add it after we find it. So in both cases, we reduce to find a click on a smaller graph and this can go on at most uh, end times. And if you think about doing something similar in an average case setting, it's kind of, it cannot possibly work because if you um, start from a graph that is random in some sense and uh, you start uh, removing uh, vertices kind of conditioned on whether an algorithm is telling you something or not, you, you start getting graphs that uh, don't look like the uh, previous one anymore. And so your uh, average case efficient algorithm is not really guaranteed to work anymore. Uh, perhaps in plant click you can do uh, something, but in, I don't think in max plus action, for example, you are in good shape because you must start getting a very asymmetric graph. Uh, actually, also for max click, at some point you might get small if you're lucky. Uh, but you see this even more for something like uh, trees up. Uh, for trees up, what you would do is to kind of hardwire a Boolean value in one of the variables. If the formula is still satisfiable, you got it right. Otherwise, you know that it's the complement. Uh, and now you reduce to finding a way to satisfy the remaining formula minus that variable. And again, a Boolean formula where you that starts random, but then you uh, start assigning values to variables rapidly becomes something that is not random at all. In fact, it's not even a three set formula anymore because you start shrinking clauses. Okay, so uh, how do you... How can you do a decision versus search without uh, messing up these distributions uh, too much? So we're going to describe how to, uh, so the reduction will go from uh, a bounded halting in the uniform distribution as a search problem to uh, the decision version. All right, so we start off from uh, some machine and some X and uh, some bound T. It's a search problem, so it means that we don't just want to know if M accepts X, we want to find some weakness that M accepts X. Um, uh, now, suppose that we, uh, suppose that we knew that there is a a either a unique witness or no witness. So then we could kind of construct a a series of instances and then feed all of them to the an algorithm for the decision version. I suppose witnesses have learned uh, uh, L. Where uh, kind of each of uh, these decision problems is asking, um,
So we create this L plus one decision problems. So first of all, we ask, you know, is there a witness at all? Uh, that's the decision version of uh, Mx. If it says no, then there is no witness. We have not, in, we just answered no. Um, otherwise, uh, or in any case, we solve these other L decision problems uh, where each of them is asking, uh, is there a witness for X where the first bit is one? Is there a witness for X in which the second bit is one? Is there a witness for X in which the ith bit is one and so on? Now imagine that all these questions are answered correctly. So if there is no witness, there is no witness. If there is a witness, uh, say that we are assuming that in that case, it has to be unique. Well, then the answers to those L questions will tell us this unique witness, which bit is zero and which bit is one. So we can reconstruct it. Uh, now also, if X is random, um, each of those machines, M1, M2, uh, MI, and so on, they're just the, such the original machine plus a number between one and L. So here, uh, this first part takes at least uh, log L bits. Uh, this part is random. And uh, this part is just uh, kind of determined from uh, where the uh, kind of, we said the way the instance is constructed is that first we choose some uh, point after which it's all T, it's all ones that describe T, before that it's all random. So where this line goes uh, only changes probabilities by um, one over the length of the whole string. Uh, this part is random. Uh, this part it's uh, the log L bits, L is polynomial in N. So these are uh, order of log N bits. So the whole thing is random, perhaps with a log N entropy deficiency. So again, it's uh, dominated polynomially by the uniform distribution. So if we have an algorithm that is good in, uh, in Pagliazzo's sense for the decision problem, it means that for almost all the axes, we can get all these answers uh, correctly. And so for almost all the axes, we can either determine that there is no witness or find the witness when it exists. So with problems for a unique witness, uh, the re reduction to search, um, decision to search reduction, it's uh, very simple. Uh, what do we do when uh, the witness is not unique? Uh, we make it unique with uh, valiant Vazirani. Okay. Uh, so the, the general way this uh, reduction will uh, look like is that starting from uh, M, X, uh, and T, we actually kind of construct a, a bunch of instances. So the reduction will uh, pick a random hash function H. Uh, and then we'll uh, kind of uh, uh, construct a bunch of machines. They say they are indexed by parameter k and the parameter i. Then there is x and then there is some t. I guess this t is not the same. And both this parameter k uh, goes from 0 to l, i goes from uh, 1 to l. So what does mki? do, uh, uh, given x, oh, and then there is also, h in uh, each of these instances. So given x and h, 
uh, it checks if uh, there is a witness. Uh, such that the ith bit is one, and uh, uh, maybe this witness we call it W, and uh, H of W starts with K zeros. Right, so the reduction creates uh, roughly L square instances of uh, bonded halting, decision bonded halting. And uh, each of these instances is asking whether kind of one of the pos so it's asking for a witness of X. And it was this witness to uh, satisfy certain hash conditions and also to have a certain bit equal to one. So this is the logic for that. Uh, and also what do we do uh, in that? So we, assuming we have an algorithm for the decision version of bounding halting, we will uh, run it on uh, all these instances. Then how do we collect the result? For uh, each K, we say, well, Let's imagine that uh, there was actually a witness for a unique witness uh, having uh, its uh, hash value start with k zeros. Well, then the answers to all those questions are telling us what are the bits of this witness. Let's deconstruct it. Let's check if it's actually a witness. If it is, we are good. Otherwise, we'll try a different value of k. If uh, none of the values of k work out, we say, well, then maybe there is no witness. So that's the deduction. Uh, before I try to analyze it, just want to check if uh, the description of the reduction is uh, making sense. The questions in the local audience. What's that? I said, I, are the questions in the local audience or the Zoom audience? Yeah, Guy. Sorry, so just to clarify, so it's uh, you're, you're claiming that there's at least um, one K that has, uh, uh, for which there's a unique uh, witness with this modified problem. Yeah, so the idea of the reduction is to argue that uh, no matter how many witnesses there are, uh, there will be kind of two to the K for some K, then for that K, exactly one of them will have the first K bits of the hash function uh, being uh, all zero. Or at least that will happen at least with constant probability. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so in fact, basically that's the uh, analysis. It, it, it says, uh, you know, if there is no witness, there is no witness. Kind of, no matter what we do, we will not find a witness, and that's actually the correct answer. If there is a witness, well, there is at least one. How many are there? There will be some number of them. Now, if k is log of however many witnesses there are, then we would expect that with constant probability, exactly one of them will uh, have a hash value with uh, precisely k zeros at the beginning. Uh, because sort of uh, the kind of two to the k events, each one happens with the one in two to the k, the probability that precisely one of them happens is a, is a constant. So with constant probability for that k, this process will isolate one witness and uh, we will reconstruct it. In fact, this could also work for other values of k that we reconstruct the witness. But the point is that 
for at least one value of k, we will be able to reconstruct the witness, provided that all those answers are, uh, all those questions are answered correctly. Uh, in fact, we cannot guarantee that all these questions will be answered correctly, but the questions with the right value of k, like the questions where k is log of the number of witnesses, um, uh, sorry, forget. Um, I forgot what I just said. Um, we can sort of hope that, uh, in fact, all the questions will be answered correctly, because when we look at uh, uh, what all these instances look like, uh, so H is random, X is random, uh, T doesn't really matter, and uh, this it's uh, a constant plus uh, two logal uh, bits. So the only entropy deficiency is coming from the description of the machine. That's order of log n. So it affects the probability only as a inverse polynomial. Okay. Now, now it's, it's not great that it only works with constant probability uh, because we would like more like inverse polynomial probability or uh, something like that. But uh, this can be done several times in parallel. Like instead of doing it with just one hash function, we can do it with uh, n hash functions. Okay. So then for every hash function, for every k, and for every i, we have one of these instances. It's still polynomially many. Uh, now, for one, choice of the hash function, the probability of uh, isolating a witness for the right value of k is a constant. If, if we try n times, the probability that we never isolate it is only exponentially small. So here, actually, the reduction by itself succeeds except with exponentially small probability. There is still an inverse polynomial probability that uh, we get some wrong answers from our algorithm that is allowed to be wrong sometimes. But the randomness of the reduction does what it's supposed to do, except with exponentially small probability. Okay, so that's how you reduce search to decision. You isolate the uh, a unique witness, and uh, you so ask for its bit one at a time. To isolate the witness, you have to know how many there are. You don't know, but you can try all possibilities. And uh, that's the reduction. Okay. It's actually 10 minutes early, but this would be a, a good place to take a break. So how about we? Sounds, that sounds reasonable. Uh, so that means we start again at uh, 40 past the hour? Yeah, I think that sounds right. Guy, do you agree? Okay, yeah, we'll start at 40 past the hour. See okay. you all in. Thanks, Luca. Okay.